citizens of this beautiful city. At this time, I'd like to welcome you to the special open council meeting here at the beautiful Shaw Auditorium. But before we begin with the, um, the business ahead of us, I'd just like to give a um, shout out to all the VIU grads that are graduating this week. A great, great day today and the next few days of all the f grads and future grads here at the wonderful, in our wonderful institution here at Enamo. But also, my second plug or shout out, I'd like to uh, congratulate um, Tom Rokerby at uh, Barsview there, who did a great job last week with Mary Poppins at Barsview. Great, great performance there. Not that I knew anything about Mary Poppins, but wow, did I learn a lot, so it was great. So just wanted to sh give two shout outs this evening. All right, at this time, introduction late items. Can I please hand over to yourself, Ms. Gurry? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, for late items this evening, we have under 8A, we're adding Chief Administrative Officer Tracy Samra. She's going to be giving a verbal update on the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention and Canadian Association of Municipal Administrators Conference. Under 9B, the Strategic Plan Implementation Summary, we're going to add a presentation by Tracy Samra, Chief Administrative Officer. And 9C, an update overview of the four pillars from Victor Mema, the Director of Finance, and Dale Lindsay, Director of Community Development. I think I have the order of reverse there, though, and um, Mr. Lindsay is going to go first. Oh, I'm sorry? Yes, so under 9C, um, Mr. Dale Lindsay will be giving a report okay. on the strategic initiatives, just an update verbally, and Mr. Victor Mema will be giving an update verbally on the four pillars. Okay, well, I sort of got lost there, but I'll, you can intervene when we get to that section. And that's all for later. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion for adoption of the agenda, please? Moved, by, moved by Councillor Thorpe, second by Councillor Pratt. All in favour? Pass unanimously. Thank you. Number five, can I have a motion, please, for adoption of minutes? So moved 5A, B, and C. Uh, moved 5A, B, and C by Councillor Beswick, second by Councillor Pratt. All in favour? Passing honestly, thank you. Presentation 6A. Mr. Corson, the floor is all yours, sir. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, what's going on to do tonight was just give you an update on where we are with the uh, past period. So the process began at the end of last year. And uh, the goal was to create an open, transparent process and to work in partnership with the Nanaimo Port Authority and uh, SFN on delivering this project. So the first step was uh, to contact the MPA and uh, work with them on, on what the terms of this agreement might be. So we prepared a letter of intent uh, with, with the Port Authority, which defined our relationship, the costs, developed a work plan that we'd go to Port 2. That got approved by council in February this year, and then we spent uh, about a month and a half working on an expression of interest that would be jointly issued by the two parties. So we issued that uh, end of March, and uh, proponents had about two months to respond, and uh, proposals closed last Tuesday, and uh, there's a copy of the expression of interest that was sent out. And then we had uh, three results. So uh, three parties have shown interest in uh, proceeding with this process. Uh, Island Ferries Services Limited, uh, Clipper Navigation, and uh, Riverside Marine um, operating as V2V Vacations. So in terms of next steps, um, what we want to do is have these proposals reviewed by an independent, uh, independent party, so not by the Port Authority or the City. The goal is to establish this technical advisory group, and they'll be made up of a representative from a national accounting firm, a member from a national transportation company, and a, a member at large. And we're in the process right now of just establishing that group. So in June, we'll be establishing this group. Uh, concurrently, uh, we sent a letter out to proponents on Friday um, asking them to meet with SFN in June. So there's a couple of dates set up for meetings with them. In uh, July and August, this technical advisory group will be uh, reviewing the submissions. And uh, sorry, just prior to that, the, uh, 
the actual members of the technical advisory group will be uh, approved by the port city liaison group. So that will happen uh, end of June. Then, uh, then that group will review the submissions. They're going to come back to the city port liaison committee with the, their preferred operator. And at that time, uh, council would be asked for approval of the recommendation and the NPA board would be asked for approval. And then from October onwards, it would be negotiations with the preferred operator uh, for the lease arrangements, uh, whether it's on city or, or Portland. So that's kind of where we're at. I, I would also add that um, the liaison committee, the city, and the Port Authority have met a couple of times with representatives from Sanemo First Nation. And the city continues to meet bilaterally with SFN on this project and many others. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back from them formally about uh, their participation in this process and some of their needs. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing from SFN officially on uh, this project and other projects that we're working on. And it's my understanding that the Port Authority has been meeting with them regularly as well. So I'm hopeful going forward we see a widespread support and all of the partners working together to take this project forward. Um, thank you, Mr. Corson. Ms. Samra, um, speakers list of Councillor Bestwick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for this overview, Mr. Corson. Uh, as it relates, this is uh, pretty uh, general information. It's gr terrific to see the process identify uh, three applicants, three submissions. That um, that's great news uh, for the city. Is there a point in time where the detail of the submissions are made available to the uh, the NPA and the city's com committee, or is is this the the uh, level of information? that uh, the community uh, and the members of this council can uh, ex expect to receive? Is there more that we will receive? Um, we've, we've asked for information to be kept in confidence because there's, uh, there's confidential business information in there. I, th I think the information could be shared at the Port Days on committee meeting. I don't think we'll make it public. Thank you. And I, th and I probably knew the answer to the question. But I thought it was important that we make it clear that the information that we have here is the information that we, we are able to share. Any other information at this point, which we don't have, somebody does. We don't. Please don't ask. We don't have it. Uh, so, um, and, and until such time as that next step involves a greater uh, distribution, of the freedom of that information, there is none forthcoming. So I just think it's important that the community understand that so it's not as though that we're not sharing something. I haven't seen it. Please don't ask me. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Corson, for your, uh, for your overview. I appreciate that, and I appreciate seeing what the next steps will be. I just want to... Uh, First and foremost, uh, congratulate uh, city staff, yourself, of course, and others uh, in this partnership, which I think has been a very successful partnership with the Port Authority in, in making this happen. This is very exciting news for the city. We've been waiting a long time for it. And to have three uh, groups come forward and express interest, I think, is fantastic. Um, my question would be related to the technical advisory group. Is there a, a job description or what's the process for identifying those very important people? Uh, yeah, so we're just refining uh, basically a, a letter that we're going to send out to these firms. Um, we're still working on the mail list. We're hoping to do that tomorrow with the Port Authority. But the letter basically uh, asks people from these firms, are you interested in participating? Can you let us know your availability over the summer? And this is the assignment we have for you. Um, and then we'll bring those submissions to the technical advisory group with some ranking evaluation for them to make a decision on who they want to appoint. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hong. Um, thank you, Chair. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Corson, for the presentation. I'm excited that we have three proponents. Um, I actually have a question, if you don't mind, is kind of the same lines that Councillor Thorpe mentioned. With regards to forming the tag, a member at large, how are you going to choose that member? Like, as you know, there's three organizations, one is local. So if we're picking a local organization, uh, somebody local here, ties, how are you going to determine that there isn't going to be a conflict? Or I have an issue as, as a member at large with regards to what we don't, as council don't know. Because if that is a recommendation, it's a third, if there's three people on this, that they can sway a recommendation. So I'm a little concerned that a member at large where they don't really have any technical knowledge with regards, and if they do, I'm sure they know or associate it somehow with the Clipper or other marine related issues because that's the technical person you want is a marine person who probably knows who's in the game so i'm just a little concerned at that member at large person that is going to be appointed so i like to know if there's going to be you know any issues with regards to that thank you Do, do I, uh, right. Sorry, do I want to that, uh, no sorry. Basically, we're going to, you know, identify some people. We're bringing them back to the to uh, the, the committee, and you'll have a chance to review the resumes. and And our goal is to find someone neutral. This whole process is about being independent, um, you know, making sure people are upfront about what their relationships are with these firms. Uh, we have a few ideas for pe uh, potential applicants. So, okay, so a follow up on that. So we or the MPA and the city are actually going to go look for these people. So there's just not going to be an online form that somebody can fill out and say, hey, I'd like to be on this committee. No. So, okay, so you're actively looking for these people. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Ms. Amra? And given that this international applications for this, we're still having discussions about what constitutes a, a local representative. Thank you. Councillor Fuller. I think this is really cool. Uh, this is exciting. Three proponents. Who'd have thunk? Uh, as Councillor Beswick says, we don't know nothing, so don't contact us. When we know something, you're going to know it. Uh, you know, so all the conspiracy theories you want to throw on Facebook, go for it. But there are no conspiracy theories with this. So once we know something, you will know something. And I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. Just a quick comment I'd like to make would be um, I'd like to thank you, uh, Ms. Samra, Mr. Corson, for uh, the work you and your staff have put into this. And also um, this council are making a bold move of uh, working in conjunction, collaborative with the NPA at, um, numerous months ago. Working in the silos, we weren't getting too far on this project. And uh, so... We're only better as one working in partnership in this city, so I wanted to share that like, it only makes sense, and we're having hope we're going down the right pathway, and one of those three will come through. So it's um, we're told numerously, you know, the critics that we won't get nobody. So here we are. So I'm really pleased with the good work that this council's decisions, but also with the uh, good work you guys have done. So I want to lift my hands up to you guys. So this time, can I please have a motion to receive Mr. Corson's presentation? Moved by Councillor Hong, second by Councillor Bestwick. All in favor? Pass unanimously. Thank you. Seven. Um, I've, I sort of babbled in the beginning with some uh, shout outs there, so I won't carry on. Otherwise, I can go on for hours. Um, 8A. Uh, hand that over to uh, Ms. Samra. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Mayor. I just wanted to. Um advise the community that the city will be arranging to put some information on our website about the two conferences that took place uh, this last week. I attended for the first time the Canadian Association of Municipal um, Administrators. It's a national conference that brings together 
uh, city managers from across the country and it gives us an ability to workshop ideas and to work on policy and to network. It was a very enjoyable event, so I'll be providing an overview of the different uh, uh, workshops that I attended. And then I also had the um, honor of attending the Federation of Canadian Municipalities annual national event in Winnipeg. And I cannot say I've been to a better organized um, conference in, in my, all of my career. It was top notch. Every single session that I went to had a panel of experts, um, just accomplished people speaking about asset management, talking about rail crossings, talking about um, leadership issues. And the sessions ended too quickly. They lasted an hour and a half and they could, they could have gone on for days. And what was really inspiring was to see members of our council at these sessions and seeing members of the RDN and our other community um, people there and being excited and talking to each other about, wow, if there's this federal money available, you know, Nanaimo might go in on it, but maybe we might do better if we do it as RDN. And just looking at all the opportunities to partner with one another and share um, our, our, our community. So, um, Already, I know there's been some summaries, and I'm hoping that the um, council members that attended can assist me with some of their input, and we'll put something online for the community, and uh, perhaps be able to do Q&A on that in a future date. Really great conference, and um, I can't say enough about being able to go, so I thank you very much, council, for allowing me to attend with you. Um, thank you, Ms. Samra. Um, Councillor Pratt. Thank you. I would just like to add my voice to that um it was an excellent conference um four days of learning and very intense learning um some of the workshops that i attended were uh, uh, to do with asset management sponsorship city revitalization um looking at um historical preservation uh city parks infrastructure First Nations relationships. There were so many different streams, and uh, and it was certainly uh, very valuable. And so, you know, we've had some conversation um, in past meetings about our attendance at conferences, and in going to this one, um, it really reaffirmed with me just how valuable uh, this kind of participation is. And I feel I felt very um, lucky to be able to attend it and take part in it and be able to talk to. 1,500 other people from across the country. I mean, it was just unbelievable how many people were there and how much participation there was. I, and it was flawless. I mean, buses coming and going, it was just unbelievable how they managed to shuffle us all around. But I did want to just um, thank the organization um, for allowing City Council to be able to participate in these kinds of learning experiences and networking experiences extremely valuable for me and uh, I look forward to working with Tracy and and putting something down so that we uh, are able to share that with the public and with our other councillors. Thank you Councillor Pratt. Councillor Fuller. I'm just curious as to whether they uh, post uh, the breakout sessions on their website. I'm looking at it right now and I can't seem to find anything but that doesn't mean they don't do it. It might just mean I'm incompetent. In some of the sessions, they talked about getting the materials online, but I guess it'll be two to four weeks. I jotted down names of key contacts, so we'll all look at getting almost as much as we can. Cool. Thanks. Councillor Hong. Um, thank you, Chair. <laughs> I quite enjoyed that conference, and I actually just wanted to tell the people of Nanaimo that if you think our roads are bad, Go to Winnipeg. Like uh, you cannot imagine how beautiful our roads and sidewalks are compared to what they have. Um, it was great networking. I tried my best to meet everybody, or at least one person from every province. I really struggled to meet somebody from Saskatchewan. I finally did in the last day. I don't know why. It must be some sort of turf war between Manitoba and Saskatchewan, but it was hard to find somebody from Saskatchewan. But I managed to do it. They had some amazing things there. I spent a lot of time in the conference. I managed to talk to a lot of people. I got a lot of information that I'm hoping that we can scan and post up for people because I think there's a lot of information from Yellow Pages that was relevant to retail and online and such and such. Great package on how to charge insurance companies for our fire calls. 
So there's a lot of different things that I actually learned from there, and LED lights, as I was mentioned. There was three or four there this year compared to last, I'm just saying. Um, the breakout sessions were really good. Um, I don't want to toot our own horn, but our youth council would have had an amazing response to the delegates. The information that they were craving is exactly what we are doing right now. So we're way ahead of the curve of a lot of other municipalities in this country. And they're thriving and, and they're, they're trying to grab at the information that we can provide. So I'm hoping that we can move forward with that and get the information that we've learned from our youth council forward to other cities so they can actually learn from that. So great, and I, and I can't wait to work with Tracy to get all the stuff I've learned um, on paper for everybody to see as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hong. Councillor Brennan. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, what I wanted to add to this um, discussion is that while going there and, and um, accessing learning um, so that we could do our job better is, was really important, but I think what, what um, we haven't talked about, and that is um, what the FCM can do for us, and our participation as a, a huge body of councillors behind the FCM can move forward initiatives that we couldn't even, even dream of doing on our own. Um, my favorite, of course, is um, the example of uh, Jack Layton. When he was president of the FCM, he was a, a councillor in um, the city of Toronto at the time, and he successfully lobbied the, the feds on behalf of the FCM to create the gas tax fund. So the money that we receive from the feds every year is an initiative that um, was made possible because of lobbying by the FCM and, and their, their very close relationship with whatever uh, government is, is in, in place at the time. Um, Raymond Louie, who is our past president now, is credited with lobbying the current Liberal government to work more closely with municipalities on climate action programs. Um, and among other things. So it's, it's not just important to us as individual councillors, but as we participate in the FCM, it gives the FCM more weight and they can um, take our issues forward to the federal government and make things happen for us locally. And that's really important. So that's something that I think we, haven't, we don't talk about enough how important they are to us and our work. So I was really happy to participate and got a lot of lot out of it. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please, to accept the CAO's verbal update? Moved by Councillor Pratt, second by Councillor Hong. All in favor? Pass. Thank you, unanimously. 9A. I'll hand that over to the staff for the summary update. I just, we included this uh, for your information because it's been uh, quite some time since we've updated Council on the work of implementing some of the recommendations in the Watson Governance Review that took place back in 2013. I would draw your attention to page three of the report, which would be 25 of your package. And that uh, gives an overview of some various recommendations about the committee structure for the city uh, that staff were um, asked to work on. And they, for the large part, I think all of them remain in progress or on hold. And it's the, we are using these as a basis, uh, senior management uh, team and myself and legislative services for doing the review of the committees and the committee structure. Uh, I have updated you a few weeks ago or maybe a month that we have a preliminary recommendations on the committee uh, structure that we want to bring forward to council. We were trying to get it to you this evening, but uh, we were unable to complete that report. So we're hoping to have a report back to council next week on some proposed changes to the committee structure for your consideration. And it's based in large part on these recommendations, but also uh, what we anticipated it coming through from the core services review, uh, feedback from committee members, 
And I think a really important part uh, is hearing from the directors, senior management, on what their needs are as staff for the committee structure. Because as you know, council, the purpose of committees are to assist council in its overall governance function. And council is setting the strategic priorities, the vision, and, and the way forward for the community. And what you can't get done at this table is what you, you, you delegate uh, to different committees to work on your behalf. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and we want to come back with recommendation that works for council and uh, supports your governance, but also helps um, streamline or helps our operations and staff carry out our various activities uh, that fall under the different committees and commissions. So this was an information piece. There, we've left all the recommendations from the Watson reports. So you'll see stuff there on the city manager and governance and codes of conduct. I think it was important to share that with the community. Uh, we will be moving forward on some of those projects going forward. I can tell you, for example, that we are now about to uh, engage in the procedural bylaw review. So we're set up to do that over the summer. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share with you. And just make sure you had that, refreshed your memory on it, uh, and let you know that next week we'll be coming forward with a report on the committee structure. Thank you. Any comments, Council, on this subject? Yes. Um, Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Samra. Uh, to me, uh, the whole area of governance is a very important topic for this Council to, uh, to be continually aware of, and I don't want the uh, Watson document to, uh, to uh, lie fallow somewhere. So I appreciate this update, and, and I look forward to future updates as well as we work our way through some of the other recommendations, and especially looking forward to, uh, to the uh, recommendations and discussions regarding the committees and commissions. So thank you for this. Thank you, Councillor Thorpe. Any other uh, comments or questions on regards to the Watson report? Councillor Fuller. Just, just some light humor with regards to this very important document. The city gives us these iPad thingies and you can actually make comments on documents and highlight things and do all this fun stuff, which I've done over the past few days. And then sitting at another meeting today, I inadvertently deleted it all. Save it. <laughs> Thanks, Gord. Thanks, Gord, for the IT uh, suggestions. Um, all right. Can I have a uh, motion here to, for an update on this? Do I need a motion on this or just mo moved by Councillor Pratt? Motion to receive. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Pratt. Second by Councillor Thorpe. All in favor? Thank you. Pass. Um, 9B, Strategic Plan Implementation Summary. I believe that is going to be Mr. Lindsay or Ms. Samra. I'll hand it over to you guys. Thank you. Acting Mayor. Council is having a retreat next week uh, to talk about your strate strategic vision and strategic priorities and key capital projects. And in advance of that, you ask staff to provide you with an overview of what was done on the strategic plan. As you know, uh, back in 2012, there was a comprehensive community engagement process uh, between the city and citizens in Nanaimo to develop a strategic plan. And a number of things came from that process namely the 2012 to 2015 strategic plan. Okay, this is my first time using the clicker. Okay. So one, one of the things that I wanted to highlight is that there is a community vision, and that vision has been in place for the last five years, and it hasn't been replaced. Um, one thing perhaps the city could do better and perhaps staff could do that in some of our, our documents is to have that out there and have what is Nanaimo's vision and be able to 
share that more often in, in our reports and perhaps communication so that it's front and center and it's that whole phrase and the concepts that support it are front and center for uh, council. So at our retreat, we're going to be taking a look at that vision and getting your feedback on that and looking at a way of being able to talk about that vision in a more easy in a more easy way because it does look sort of visually complex and a vision statement should be something that's pretty simple, but that, that still reflects a community vision. So in the strategic plan, that was adopted. And then a number of other things were adopted. I'm actually unable to read that, so... I might just speak to it generally. The font is too small for my older eyes. <laughs> okay, thank you. She's, she's giving me. Thank you. Yes. So the vision. By 2025, the city of Nanaimo will proudly feature its harbor, an inclusive quality lifestyle, excelling as both the business center and transportation service hub for Vancouver Island. That is the vision for the city. As part of this process, council adopted six priorities and council adopted four community pillars. The six priorities are Water, waterfront enhancement, asset management, community building partnerships, taking responsibility, and transportation and mobility. Those are the six priorities selected by council. And then for each of those priorities, a number of action plans and outcomes and suggestions were put into the strategic plan to assist council through staff to achieve those outcomes and those goals. And for a three-year period, a report was generated, and that's attached to uh, the report that's in the agenda package, where staff updated council on progress in each of those six key areas. Another interesting thing about the strategic plan is that council adopted four community pillars and values, and those are economic health, environmental responsibility, social equity, and cultural vitality. And normally in a strategic plan, there's sort of a descriptor of which those values are and why they're important to council and to the community. An added feature for the Nanaimo strategic plan was a whole number of to-do lists to actually demonstrate that we, we do have an economic health and that we are achieving social equity. So there's a number of items that staff reported on over a three-year period um, to show the progress that we're making towards each of those. And those are also attached in the report in the agenda package. Unfortunately, we weren't able to report um, in 2014. I think there was a gap. But staff have generated a report for 2015 on the six priorities and the four pillars. And they're going to take you through that this evening. Uh, to show you where we are in 2015, at the end of 2015, on achieving each of these outcomes. And I know sometimes this seems a little um, cumbersome, strategic priorities, values, and it's sometimes difficult to navigate through the strategic plan, uh, but we're doing our best to be able to report back on those, and the objective this evening is to let you know what have we achieved, what's still in progress, what hasn't been supported. Um, so when you sit down next week, you're able to take a look at those strategic priorities when you're selecting your own, see which ones you want to continue with, and see what types of projects you want to still see us moving forward on as a city. So it's going to help us set our operational plan. Thank you, Acting Mayor. I'll uh, jump in at this point. Uh, we just want to spend a little bit of time tonight updating you, as Ms. Samra mentioned, on, on the uh, priority areas, the six priority areas and the four pillars. Uh, I'm going to spend uh, some time walking through the priority areas. There's, there's actually 27 initiatives uh, under those priority areas, and we'll just give you uh, some update. I know that Council is certainly well aware of a lot of the initiatives that have been going on uh, in the last year. I'm going to be talking primarily about 2015, so this is really an update also for the community and sort of the activities that have been going on uh, in their city. I'm here this evening uh, also with a number of directors and managers from our 
uh, departments across the city. So I'll do my best if there are specific questions that come up from council, but depending on the nature and detail of your question, I may defer to, to one of the managers or directors sitting behind me this evening. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about the uh, priority areas, and then I'll, at, uh, when I'm done, I'll hand it over to Victor Mima, and Victor's going to talk to you this evening uh, about the, the uh, four pillars. So just walking through each, I apologize on the screen here, it's probably hard to read. Hopefully if people are watching at home, it's a little bit easier. Uh, priority one in the uh, strategic plan is asset management. And under that, there were two initiatives. The first is develop a comprehensive asset management plan. Uh, as council knows, the, the city in 2015 uh, was selected to participate as one of 12 municipal municipalities across Canada uh, in a leadership and asset management program. You'll hear, hear it referred to as the LAMP program. Uh, so we've been working with municipalities across Canada uh, for the last year. Phase one of that project is now complete, and we're moving forward with phase two, which is levels of service uh, in, in the community. Uh, the second initiative was to ensure that the term of the financial plan is sufficient to encompass the major growth expansion period in Nanaimo's history. Um, as Council is aware, the asset management projects are, very, are, are highlighted in our, in our budget process. And in the 2015 to 2019 financial plan uh, the, uh, included the 1% increase for asset management. So this is an initiative that's actually started uh, back in 2013 and it's scheduled to, to end in 2017, but that was 1% taxes set aside every year uh, for the purposes of asset management. And the final point is our DCC review is underway and the work is uh, continuing on that. Uh, I'll talk about it more. It comes up again under uh, priority four, the DCC work. Priority two is commu community building partnerships. Uh, the first initiative is to support and facilitate the development of a Nanaimo social and health network. Uh, the Nanaimo and social and health uh, network steering committee uh, has been working to revise the social development strategy. That work was done in 2015 and there was a number of subcommittees listed here in front of you. Uh, they did very important work, including work on child poverty, uh, sex trade in Nanaimo, uh, vital signs partnership, a youth advisory council, and an update to the community plan to end homelessness. Uh, also, I would note on the end of, uh, with the goal of supporting social connectiveness, uh, there was also 19 mini libraries uh, installed throughout the community in, in different neighborhoods throughout the community, um, with an additional 11 uh, distributed and uh, pending installation. Uh, the second initiative under this priority was to participate in successful cities workshops and collaborate with the Chamber of Commerce to evaluate and where appropriate to monitor existing and future actions. So the successful cities initiative has really transformed in more recent years over to the Inspire Nanaimo group. And the Inspire Nanaimo was focused in 2015 on social enterprise and entrepreneurial excellency by supporting startups in Nanaimo. Um, including the 2015 UnConference and the 2015 eCatalyst Conference. Inspire Nanaimo continues to collaborate with other organizations to support successful community opportunities, uh, including uh, planning work that's been done for the 2016 Royal Architect uh, Institute uh, Conference, which I would note just as an aside is actually being held here in Nanaimo and is starting uh, later this week, I believe it starts on, on Wednesday. Uh, the third initiative was to review and define municipal roles in facilitating and maintenance of a vibrant community benefiting sector. Uh, Council did uh, receive a report on that item uh, back in 2014, so that item is uh, identified as being completed. Moving to the priority three, taking responsibility, there's a number of initiatives that were completed uh, earlier in the term of the strategic plan, including a commission on external governance and policy structure and process. Establishing and coordinating consistent current service summaries across all departments. Uh, continue the development of the balanced scorecard. Develop a comprehensive communications policy and strategy. And exploring options for town hall meetings. So as I mentioned, those first five initiatives have, have all been completed. Uh, there was a, a recommendation to adopt a public service excellence program. Uh, there was um, uh, some research that was done into that program, but it's currently put on hold. Um, the next initiative that we've identified is to continue to facilitate change and overall development and take actions, steps to be a catalyst for investment in the city's future. And there's a number of points that we've listed here uh, that Council was 
uh, involved in in 2015, which included the demolition work that was done on One Port Drive, uh, that would be the, the pallet building and the CP docks, all, all with the idea of removing barriers to redevelopment of that very important property. Uh, preparing a joint request, we, and Mr. Corson talked about this earlier this evening, preparing a joint request for a proposal with the Nanaimo Port Authority to find an operator for a foot passenger service. Uh, there was work done to complete a detailed risk assessment. This is the environmental work for One Port Drive, again, to allow for future redevelopment of that property. In 2015, Council directed the repurchase of 100 Gordon Street uh, to ensure that Conference Centre Hotel can be built in a timely manner. And also, Council directed the issuance of an RFP to obtain current market data on the Vancouver Island Conference Centre. Priority four is transportation and mobility. Uh, five initiatives under this section. Uh, to, the first was to complete a comprehensive sustainable transportation master plan that was completed and adopted by Council in 2014. Uh, the second was to continue efforts to integrate land use and mobility planning through the OCP process. And one of the major steps uh, that was directed by Council was to create a joint planning and transportation advisory committee uh, so that that work can be more closely integrated. I would note that the transportation plan that Council uh, adopted at its very heart is a land use document. So, I, so much of the work that was directed by the strategic plan was done with the adoption of that, of that very important uh, plan. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the third initiative here was to review our DCC rates to better consider cost of servicing different parts of the city and to encourage development within currently serviced areas. Again, with the goal of reducing infrastructure costs. Uh, the DCC steering committee, uh, that work is underway. Um, there's multiple steps whenever you're reviewing a DCC bylaw. Um, the major hurdles uh, are, have been completed. We've identified the associated projects. Uh, then the costing has to be done to those projects. That work has been done. We need to project the population growth that we would anticipate over the, the lifespan of that bylaw. So that work has been done. But you also need to project industrial and commercial growth. And that's something that we're actively working on right now. And we hope to have that completed at the end of this month. So we'll have a better understanding of what we anticipate for commercial and industrial development over the life of the DCC bylaw. At the end of the day, DCC bylaws are looking at growth in the community over the cost of providing that infrastructure needed for that growth. So it's important to understand both of those. Um, we're hoping that we'd have a draft bylaw and an outline of community consultation on that, on that process uh, to you by the fall of this year. Uh, the pillar initiative four, sorry, was to work with organizations to advocate and support improved external connections to the community. Uh, we've talked about this already, but preparing a letter of intent with the Nanaimo Port Authority to issue a uh, request for proposals for a foot ferry operator was a major step. Um, we've also been working closely with the RDN to explore plans for a, a new downtown transportation hub. And the fifth initiative was to work with the Island Corridor Foundation to increase viability of the ENN rail line. And we've noted here that that is currently on hold pending further discussions with all, all parties. Priority five, uh, Council also had five initiatives. Uh, the first was to confirm preferred water supply options with detailed plans, designs and agreements. Uh, staff have noted here that there's several uh, technical studies um, have been completed on the issue of water supply. Um, we also note that water consumption has declined significantly in the community. The community has been doing an excellent job on, on um, reducing overall demands for water. Uh, so in the last five years, we've actually seen that, that demand drop. Um, the second initiative uh, was for update of the water conservation strategy, um, and that work was completed and adopted in June of 2014. The uh, third initiative was for the implementation um, of the blue community designation, and that has also been completed. Um, th the strategic plan calls for the continued commitment to full cost water pricing. Uh, that work is currently on hold, and we're anticipating uh, to bring that forward in either fall of 2016 or possibly early 2017. Coming out of that review, we'll also be looking at enhancing our water billing information uh, with the goal of encouraging awareness in the community about being water wise. Um, and we're also anticipating that work, as I mentioned, to follow closely on the heels of uh, item four. 
Waterfront enhancement, as Council knows, this is an area where certainly a lot of activity has taken place in the last, uh, in the last calendar year. Uh, the first initiative was to create a waterfront interdepartmental staff team um, mandated to build partnerships and identify and act on opportunities to create an uninterrupted waterfront trail. Um, we've been working very closely at a staff level with the Nanaimo Port Authority and the tenants along Newcastle Channel uh, to discuss opportunities to extend the waterfront uh, trail through the Newcastle Channel. Uh, we've completed the archaeological study on One Port Drive, which was one of the important hurdles in understanding the redevelopment of that property. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we've uh, removed the uh, ferry dock and, um, and, and advancing One Port Drive for redevelopment. And we've also, in 2015, issued a request for proposals uh, to proceed with a master plan for the city's property at One Port Drive, and that work is currently underway, and we're hoping to have something back in front of Council in the very near future on that. Uh, the second initiative was to update the Maffeo Sutton Park Improvement Plan. Uh, the work occurred, uh, continued in 2015 to review options for the park, including public input and uh, identifying opportunities to improve, um, uh, improve the park. Uh, we've been working with, with the SFN on options for the park and, and uh, integrating uh, the property at 100 Comox Street. And the, um, and the department has gone ahead with a hiring consultant to explore opportunities for uh, the existing lagoon and are currently looking at a redesign of the playground. Uh, the third initiative is to assess and address concerns related to the aging infrastructure at Georgia Park. Um, is continuing to work through the Maffeo Sutton Master Plan and consulting with the developers of the Hilton Hotel project to look at design improvements in front of the hotel. Uh, work has been uh, done in, in 2015 to hire an engineer to look at the analysis of the bridge structure in the park and discussions are ongoing with engineers, DFO, and biologists on park improvements. Item four is the upgrade and improve the existing departure bay section of the waterfront trail. Um, this is from the Kin Hut uh, to Hammond Bay Road. Uh, that work was tendered in 2015, and as I think Council and most of the community are aware, that's, that's um, uh, now almost complete. It's very, very close to being uh, completed. And the final initiative was to work with SFN and BC Parks to explore options for improving access to Newcastle Island. In 2015, um, there was a consultant who prepared a business plan for Newcastle Island. Um, there's been ongoing collaboration with SFN to improve park signage and circulation within the park and interface between the dock and the park picnic waiting area. So, so Your Worship, that's uh, Acting Chair, that's the end of my presentation. At this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Mimut to talk to you a little bit about the pillars. No, just while we're waiting for Mr. Yuma to come, come up, I just want to point out, for example, on the waterfront enhancement, when you look in the strategic plan, there's a paragraph that talks about Nanaimo values its waterfront from four perspectives, and it goes through what they are. Then the strategic plan identifies potential strategies or initiatives, and there's more than just five of them. There's, I think there's ten here. Um, this time I'm sorry to interrupt. Before we get too far down in the conversation, um, I think Councillor Bessick has a question. Before we get too, yeah. I, I was, thank you, uh, yeah. Mr. Chair. Uh, I was just going to ask about pr process if, if Mr. Lindsay was open to questions on his half. And then if not, that's, and I can wait till the very end, but whatever you would like to, how you'd like to handle that. I think maybe the full presentation, and then both of them will be up here, and additional staff can come forward and answer the question. So we take you through an overview. So at the conclusion of, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So and interrupt. It, so I just wanted to point out to council that while we're only reporting on five or six this year, some of them may have been done the other years, and some of them may not have been taken up and put into our operational plan. So you're not going to see a neat check off between potential strategies, strategies or initiatives and our operational plan that we actioned as staff. And we haven't also reported fully on the outcome desire, the outcomes. Have we achieved each of those? We've completed certain steps, but there's different criteria in the strategic plan when you look outcomes desired, enhanced public access and use. Did we achieve that? So we haven't reported on that. A continuous in, uninterrupted and accessible waterfront trail connected from X to Y. That's a desired outcome, but it's also a potential strategy. So I know I'm sounding confusing, but this thing is difficult to read and it is sometimes confusing. So if you have questions, 
about a particular project that you saw in the strategic plan and whether or not we've done it. It may not be in this 2015 summary. It may be in your report and have been completed in another year. Thank you. Um, through the chair. I am just going to walk you through uh, in the same manner that uh, Mr. Lindsay uh, walked you through the strategic priorities. I will cover a shorter presentation around pillars. The major difference between the priorities and the pillars is that the four pillars are ongoing in nature um, and within the activities or initiatives that were identified, some have a finite date, uh, so would have been completed by now, but others are ongoing. Um, and so you would have a mix of ongoing uh, initiatives and some aspects of the pillars that have come uh, to, to completion. The first uh, pillar of the four is uh, the economic health pillar. The goal around economic health uh, was to promote a thriving economy uh, in the city of Nanaimo. Within that, uh, the, the, the sub-strategy initiative was to support uh, economic development in the downtown area and also uh, with the work that the NEDC does. And I'm glad to report that Council in 2013 actually realigned our property tax rates uh, uh, between our commercial and industrial so that they became uh, the same. They used to be two rates uh, for those two classes. Now, they are now the same. And that, was, that work was completed in 2013. The city has continued to provide funding uh, for the downtown uh, uh, business improvement area and also has continued to provide funding for VICC as well as NEDC with the hope and understanding that these funds would in turn result in some economic uh, uh, activity in the downtown area. So that's as much as I would report uh, around the promotion of a thriving economy as pillar number one. Pillar number two uh, had to do with environmental responsibility, and the goal was to protect and enhance the environment. There were a number of initiatives that were identified, the first being to update the corporate climate change plan. That plan has not been completed, and work is slated to begin uh, in 2017. Strategy number 2B was to continue to update and refine the Community Sustainability Action Plan a number of initiatives we're undertaking around energy efficiency uh, in our buildings. Uh, we participated in the Energy Star appliance rebate with Hydro, BC Hydro. We also held a number of workshops with the Rialta Energy uh, uh, Group uh, within the town. We also, uh, as some of you might uh, remember that last week, we had uh, the Bike to Work Week as part of the alternative and active transportation strategy. We also worked with uh, city developers to look at alternative transportation options as developments were being undertaken across town. We also expanded about 2.6 kilometers of new cycling facilities, which is bike lanes, cycle tracks, and separated bike lanes uh, across town. Uh, we also improved a number of crosswalks for pedestrians in terms of uh, warning flashes uh, to improve uh, some safety issues uh, where we could. We also uh, had the city adopt the low carbon mobility strategy, uh, which uh, in layman's term is the anti-idling policy uh, for city fleet. Strategy number 2C, uh, the initiative there was to execute the urban forest management strategy. The city completed uh, the update and amendment of the maintenance and protection of trees bylaw, uh, and that was completed, uh, started and should be completed in 2016. Approximately about 100 street and boulevard trees were planted uh, within subdivisions and particularly in the old city quarter. Item 2D, uh, under environmental responsibility, was to review and update the water conservation strategy and Council actually adopted the water conservation uh, strategy in June of 2014. Under pillar number three, 
titled Social Equity, the goal there is to encourage social enrichment. Uh, the strategy 3A was to update the social development strategy contained in the OCP. The social development strategy was updated and a number of substructures of the health and social network were formed to address specific area needs within that uh, social development strategy. Item number 3B, strategy 3B was to implement initiatives and opportunities consistent with the OCP to reduce homelessness. Uh, and Housing First Action Plan. A number, about two uh, supported housing uh, projects were actually completed within this term. Uh, we also have implemented a rent supplement program in partnership with the uh, Nanaimo Region John Howard Society and also participated in the Sex Trade Action Plan draft document and identified some specific funding uh, so that we could implement that aspect of the action plan. And lastly, uh, pillar number four has to do with cultural vitality and the goal there is to ensure a strong and a vibrant culture. The strategy 4A there was to develop and update a cultural strategy. I'm happy to report that Council actually adopted the 2013 to 2020 uh, cultural creative plan for the city of Nanaimo that was completed in 2014. Item 4B was to update the Parks Recreation and Culture Master Plan and that uh, project is on hold uh, pending the completion of the core service review which was recently done so we should be moving on that aspect uh, in the near future. Strategy number 4C under the cultural vitality was to continue to implement the heritage conservation plan. I'm pleased to report that we've continued to uh, implement the heritage conservation program. We have updated the heritage registry uh, held uh, in 2015, in February 2015, we held the annual Held Heritage Summit. We've also uh, continued to promote awareness of Nanaimo's heritage resources. Uh, we have uh, given out uh, about $262,000 in grants uh, related to culture and heritage. Uh, and organizations that have receive, received this money have actually leveraged that $262,000 to about $4.3 million. Um, and also, each year we continue to uh, install temporary art uh, in city parks and public spaces and uh, have continued to promote uh, self-guided public uh, art across the, the city. In 2015, we actually produced the uh, report card on culture, and some of you may remember seeing uh, this informative brochure uh, that I am told we will continue to produce every year to provide uh, feedback on activities that we are undertaking. In short, that concludes my presentation on the four pillars related to the 2012 to 2015 strategic plan. Thank you. Councillor Bestwick. Thank you, Mr. Amran and gentlemen. I appreciate uh, the effort and time that you've put into this report. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, I'll, if you may, if I may, I'll just start with uh, Mr. Lindsay. You mentioned uh, Master Plan One Port Drive RFP. Could you please provide me a little bit more depth on its status? Acting, uh, acting Chair to. Uh uh, Councillor Beswick, um, as I mentioned, the RFP was, uh, we put out the call in 2015, uh, but the actual uh, consultant was selected in 2016 and that work uh, has begun. So a lot of that work uh, involves contacting our, our stakeholders and neighbouring uh, governments. Uh, they're impacted by the development of that property, getting feedback, um, including from community groups. Um, developing, the stage right now is actually developing options uh, for the use of that property. So that's what I was saying earlier that we're hopeful that in the very near future We'll actually have some some concept plans that we'll be able to bring back to council uh, And update you on the on the work of that plan Ultimately then like with any planning process we would be out to the public uh, We anticipate in the fall of this year to get to get some feedback ultimately be back looking uh, to, to council to uh, adopt a master plan uh, for that property Thank you appreciate that and question number two mr. Mema um, on Priority 6B, 
If I may, it's uh, the Mafeo Sutton Park Improvement Plan. And uh, is there an update on its status in terms of a uh, master plan update? Thank you. We're still on here? Acting Mayor, am I still on? Yeah. Yep. Councilor Beswick, yeah, the plan the plan is uh, is just we're ready to come to to council. We're kind of waiting to see if the Parks and Recreation Commission was back in 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 place before we move forward. But the other thing that's happened in the last year is that the SFN has been finishing their business plan on Newcastle Island, which also showed some interest for their hundred their their property, which is adjacent to Mayfield Sutton Park. So one of our objectives is actually to come. Uh, with SFN, with our plan and their plan at the same time to both councils because there's some real commonality that we can do with that. So we hope to have that. We're really hoping this, this month, if not July, to come back to council. Thank you. So it's reasonable for me to assume then that sometime in the fall we'll have a completed Mafeo Sutton master plan integrated with our stakeholder partners, SFN and and the province as it, rela and as it, as it relates to uh, other outlying parks or areas? That's definitely our goal, yeah. And are we driving that? Are, are we the drivers? On that? We're the drivers for the Mafeo Sutton uh, plan, so we're ready to go um, with, with that. But also, we're, we're, there's, when the SFN, we work with the SFN BC Parks on the Newcastle Island business plan, and some of the objectives that came out of that plan was showing some opportunities that the SFN could have for their property, which is on Mafeo. So with some of those, we think it's a, it's, it'd be, it'd be a um, bit prudent if we could come together to show the, the objectives for both improvements to the Mafeo Sutton that would be in concert with SFN's property. Okay, thank you. I look forward to seeing that in the fall at the latest. And my last question is for Mr. Mema. Uh, you made reference to warning flashers. And I recall about three meetings ago, maybe six weeks, we spoke about warning flashers, pedestrian warning flashers, and it was... Um, kind of driven by ICBC, like they, they kind of have selected. Um, I, I'm good with yeah. Richard. Thank you. They, they have like intersections, uh, or um, maybe high pedestrian traffic areas, and I just want to make sure that uh, how we get to bring those areas to somebody's attention to investigate whether it's worthy or not of having flashers. And the, the, the street is Stewart Avenue. It may perhaps be one of our widest streets and longest stretches uh, in, in Nanaimo that's 50 kilometers an hour. It isn't. And with lots of pedestrian traffic going across to the waterfront, downtown Site Road, down to the waterfront. And I'm just waiting for um, something serious to happen there one day, uh, but I, I think it's really important. And I, my question is, how do I get that to who to please do, to at least investigate whether or not that's a worthy location for a flashing? It's the widest, I'm sure it's the widest street we have, and people rushing to and from the ferries and everything else. Through the chair, um, I, I would, I would I would be the least qualified to answer that question. I would defer to Mr. Lindsay in case he, he has an answer, but oh. we, we will take that up under advisement. For Are you running for political reference. office? <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, we'll take that away and, and be able to come back uh, with, with the straight answer for you. And this is my last question. Thanks. Sorry, through the acting chair, I, just, uh, I would just echo um, what Mr. Beavis said, and we'll, we'll certainly follow up with the council. I know that our transportation and engineering staff look closely at all of our pedestrian infrastructure and evaluate um, and rank um, improvements throughout the community. So I imagine part of what we'll be doing is uh, identifying to you uh, where they've ranked in our evaluation. Also, of course, uh, Stewart Avenue is a bit of a unique situation in that it's a, it's a provincial um, highway, so it's not ex it's not the same as in the same amount of control as we would have on our on our other roads, so it would involve ultimately the city working, uh, working with the province on that type of improvement. Sounds easy to me. Thanks, Councillor Fuller. Got a few for you. 
uh, taking responsibility is looking at this and it says explore options for town hall meetings complete was there a report done or is the fact we've had three or four e town halls was that the only option that was explored in the town hall meetings because it seems to me that there are other options than just the town hall and yet yeah, this says it's complete. Councillor Fuller as Philip Cooper comes forward to give you the statistics, that's one of the things I awkwardly pointed out to you is that the way that the st strategic plan is put together, it has lots of ideas and strategies and goals, and we're not reporting on every single one each year. So taking responsibility does have a lot of other strategies. We may not be reporting on them each year, but this was a 2010 to 2015 plan. Yep. We're now in 2016, and it says complete. So if it's not complete, it should just say still in progress or something like that. I know there's lots of different initiatives, but it does say complete. Next. Uh, Wait, Phillips, Phillips, would, you, would you like a comment on that? Sure. Or, um, I, I think it's a, it's a valid observation. The, I would think the city has put a lot of emphasis on the, the E-Town Hall due to the um, variety of methods that the public can use to engage uh, council staff on tough questions. There, there could be other methods of, of doing town halls. One thing I did talk about um, just before uh, this council was elected in the fall of 2014 is an emerging trend with public um, focus groups, which the city of Surrey has had tremendous success with. And that's something that I'm actually going to be bringing up in a future presentation again. So that type of a tool could be classified perhaps as, a, as an online town hall opportunity. So I wouldn't suggest that the e-town hall is the be-all, end-all, but that has been the item that we put a lot of resources at. We've had tremendous success with and won awards, but there could certainly be more. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And the e-town halls, I'm not saying that they're not good. Um, that it won awards, I've seen things win awards that really weren't good, but we won't even go there. <laughs> Uh, moving on then, uh, 4D work with other organizations, the states worked with the RDM to explore conceptual plans for the downtown transportation hub. Is this with regards to the MOU that expired in 2014? Um, through the acting chair, yes in part, That's what it was identified at that point between the two parties. Um, but, but more recently, I would say this work is continuing in the master plan that I was speaking of earlier uh, with One Port Drive. Um, so that's certainly one of, the, one of the issues. It's one of the challenges uh, that the planners and the planning team are going to be working on bringing forward that plan and options is how to integrate transportation and the potential of a, um, a mobility transportation hub on, on that property or within close proximity to that property. Okay, because, yeah, it was of the understanding we had an MOU that would have uh, transferred with money coming to us over half of the uh, developable property to the RDM. But that MOU expired in 2014, and I'm, I'm hearing also that there's some work at the RDM looking at a linear transit service on uh, that Front Street curve or down by Port Place Mall, which I've always thought was a great idea and why it isn't happening. I don't know. Water conservation strategy. In the past, I've heard that, uh, you know, as good as our infrastructure may be, there's a lot of water leaks through the pipes uh, before it even gets to the homes. Do we have an estimate on what percent of water is leaking through the pipes, doesn't even enter the homes, just goes back in, in as groundwater? We absolutely do. I just don't know what it is. Okay. I, so I, we, could certainly, we could find that out for you and report yeah. back to council. Because I think that's part of your water conservation strategy is if, if you identify those leaks, stop them. Yeah. Uh, now that'll cost a lot. So, And then I think I have one more. Uh, yes, one more with the, the Pillar 2 environmental responsibilities. What is a corporate climate change plan? Great question. I think <laughs> with, a, with a lot of the um, taking responsibility, uh, 
that's the implementation of corporate and governance structures. Uh, um, corporate culture change is something that senior management and myself are talking about, and we're going to embark down that road as changing the corporate culture in, and how decisions are made and setting a vision for staff at an administrative level. We're going to be workshopping a half day and looking at what type of organization do we want to be working in and what type of work environment do we want and how do we want people to participate in decision making. So corporate culture change is about the administrative uh, environment. Um, every organization has its own culture and this is something that we're going to be working on within the city of Nanaimo. It was observed in the Watson report. It's been observed in a recent environmental scan. It's also been observed in the core services review that that could be something that we work on. And we've started that work, and I'm really looking forward to doing it over the next year or two. It takes a lot to change uh, corporate culture and adapt and find out what people want. And we've taken the first step. Senior management is going to go on a retreat together, and we're going to start mapping this out. And so I take it as part of a corporate culture pl change plan, we will add in the climate part of the corporate climate change plan. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. I'd, uh, I don't have questions, I don't believe, at this point, but I, I have a, a comment which I think is a valid one, and that is basically that this information is so valuable, not just for, for council to get this update, but for members of the public to hear and see this as well. Because sometimes I think there is a fallacious impression that work is not getting done, that we're not making progress, we're not doing things, and I think that's incorrect. And we do have a strategic plan. We're in the process of refreshing that right now. We're doing work on that. We do have our four pillars, uh, which we are building on. We do have um, our priorities, as we've just heard this evening. But beyond that, and even more important, those aren't just words. We also have strategies and initiatives to back them up. And this document is showing how those strategies are working and what progress we have made. And I think this is wonderful information to share to the public. And I'm very impressed with the progress we've made in all of these areas. And I'm sure there's other items, uh, if we gave it more thought, could be added as well in terms of what we've done in progress. So my congratulations to our city staff for all of the good work that they are doing, often unrecognized behind the scenes, to move forward the priorities and uh, the items that this council have identified as important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thorpe. I really appreciate those kind words to staff. If I had had my way, I would have had a whole table out and every staff director and manager would have reported out all the great things that they're doing, but I got overruled. <laughs> Dell and Victor came up and the backup plan was to have other people here, but I really wanted to showcase all the stuff that's gone on over these last five years and all of the accomplishments towards Council's priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Council, any more comments before I call a motion to receive? Not, and seeing no more comments, can I have a motion please to receive? So moved. Uh, moved by Council Thornton, moved by uh, second by uh, Councillor Pratt. All in favor? Pass unanimously. Thank you. 9C. Anyone want to move that? Moved, uh, we, Ms. Curry, we're, it's nice to use those minutes. Am I not right? Is that not right? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Hong. Second, Second by Councillor Bestwick. All in favor? Passed. Unanimously. I'm assuming Gord voted yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Motion to receive the correspondence. So moved. Oh, sorry. Oh. Did, I get, did I get that right, Ms. Curry? Yes, you can move all three items of the correspondence, or if you want to go through them individually, you can do that as well. With Council's wishes? Uh, moved by uh, Councillor Pratt, all three, I'm assuming? Yes. Second by Jerry. All in favor? Passed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bestwick. 
Speaker. I'd just like to speak, if I could, um, to item B. And I'm not certain if I should have done that prior to the vote to receive the correspondence. Um, I might just, uh, I, and the, for those in the audience or, uh, or at home, petition from, from the Hospital Area Neighborhood Association requesting construction of a sidewalk on the south side of Dufferin Crescent. Um, Councillor Brennan, uh, this is, I'm quite certain this is the, this, the street and the specific uh, 150 meters or so. And as that falls within my portfolio uh, with Public Works and Engineering, uh, I visited the site uh, with uh, the member of staff responsible, and uh, staff is anticipating direction coming from council as it relates to the 2017 budget. Uh, that sidewalk is in the 2019 budget, and uh, so opportunity for us uh, to move it into the 2017 budget looks optimistic. Uh, it's certainly an area of growth and considerable uh, traffic, uh, pedestrian and otherwise. And I hope that um, our, my colleagues, uh, sometime when we're reviewing the 2017 opportunities, that uh, this item will be front and center and top of the list. It's a very worthy project to move up. I don't want to get into that conversation or debate right now, but perhaps uh, my colleague, Councillor Brennan, would like to speak to it. I'm not sure. I will be supporting when the time comes that we move it up to 2017, just so you know. Thank you. And Councillor Brennan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I will support it when it um, comes up as well. Um, I One of the sessions that I took at the um, FCM was called Active Transportation and uh, it's part of our transportation plan too. So um, things like sidewalks and bike lanes and um, such encourage people to get out of their cars and use bikes or actively um, be pedestrians or runners or whatever and keeping um, areas like that up to standard uh, encourages that, it helps it. And I, I see that uh, that section as connecting Dufferin over to Bowen, and with the the um, increasing population there, with the um, condos and the big apartment buildings. If we're serious about wanting to have active transportation be part of the culture of our city, we need to take initiatives to make sure that that we can accommodate our citizens when they choose to make that shift. So I'm going to be a big supporter of this. Um, thank you. Can I, uh, Sheila, Ms. Gurry, is there any um, notice of motion? No? Okay. 12, any other business? Oh, no. Can, can oh, we sorry. go back to the... Um, oh, sorry, 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 Gord. Councillor Fuller. neighborhood. I'm going to keep an open mind on this, but I'm going to want a far more information because when we move the standards of this up from 219 to 217, we're going to have to set the standards back for other ones that might be scheduled ahead of it. So there's a cause and effect. And so when this does come up, I'm going to want to have a far more information and what other ones in the community will have to be moved. And then this could also open up a can of worms in that anybody who is in the 2018 or later in 2017 or even in 2019 can flood us with wanting theirs moved forward ahead. So I'll keep an open mind on it. And when it does come up, I want a lot more information. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. Co Councillor Brennan. So assuming that the discussion on the sidewalk is finished. I would like to speak to the request from um, Crimson Coast to um, have Mayor and Council write a letter in support of the Infringing Dance Festival. That, that's included in the third letter. So um, assuming everybody's had an opportunity to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, no? Did you yeah. say no? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Um, I would move that um, Mayor and Council 
write a letter in support of the infringing dance festival. It's if I get a second or I can speak to that. Second by Councillor okay. Fuller. Councillor Brennan? It's a, it's a festival that's been in its 18th year. Yep. It's um, an important one. It, uh, it addresses um, income inequality in that it, it makes sure that tickets are available for, for people who have lower incomes. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why this is a really good event for, for our city. So a letter... Uh, supporting it will help them achieve the funding, and I think that's something we should do. Thank you. Uh, I have moved by Councillor Brennan, second by Councillor Fuller, to uh, Ms. Gray to write a letter of support for the Infringe Festival. Um, there, um, all in favor? Pass unanimously. Oh, sorry, Jerry. I just wanted to discuss that. Yeah. I, I'm in favor of it, but all these letters that we're writing, I don't understand why when we actually give them funding, doesn't that theoretically say we support them? Yeah. So it just kind of confuses me that we, we give them funding. All these organizations, obviously we support them, otherwise we wouldn't give them funding. So for us to be coming up writing letters of support for everybody, I think we should just have a generic letter for them that's giving everybody that, hey, we fund you. Obviously we support you. It just seems to be that we're double doing this, but I, I don't mind having a generic letter for these. Like I said, for, for us not to support this would be ludicrous when we already gave them funding money. So it's just one of those weird things that I, I see us doing something that we don't really need to do, and we should have a letter to support every organization that we give money to so they can take that letter and get funding. Seems to make sense to me. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Um, Councillor Fuller. I think this is more so that they can get other funding, not just the funding from us. Other funding agencies may see that they're getting funding from us, but when we actually send a letter of support to the other agent, to the funding agencies, they're more likely to give that funding to the festival, which means in the long run, hopefully we would have to give them even less funding in the future. So, yeah. You want a rebuttal, Councillor yeah, And I agree. It's not a rebuttal. It's, I agree with that. But in the initial funding, when we give organizations funding, we should just give them a letter that states that we support them so they can, in turn, take that letter to get other funding. And I agree with that. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying let's just yeah. give them all a letter once we approve their funding every year or every second year whenever we do it so they can take that letter and do whatever they want so they don't have to come and do this. Yeah. We obviously support them. We gave them money. Exactly. Thank you. Councillor Brennan. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with issuing a letter at the time you issue the, the grant, but I do think that personalized letters hold a lot more weight than form letters, and um, it gives us an opportunity, I think, to um, talk about how um, these festivals um, enhance our own city. So why not take that kind of opportunity when we have a chance to say, you know what, this is a great city, we do lots of festivals, this is a really fabulous festival, and we're really proud to support it. You know, just, just some sort of personalization is a good plan, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Councillor Pratt, and let's vote on this one, please. Yeah. We I, I, oh, I, we did? No, no, we didn't. Not on, not on no, we sending haven't. the letter. No, we haven't. Not yet. <laughs> did we? No. Oh. Come on, okay, chair. just one comment, and that is that um, coming from the nonprofit world, I do understand the importance of these kinds of letters. They add weight to different applications that they're that they're um, in this specific case. So, um, like Councillor Brennan said, I think sometimes just that most recent. Yes, right now we're really looking at this and very excited to be able to support them in in this for our city and for our community. Okay, thank you. Um, now I, we passed eleven twelve. Question period. Is there to agenda items only? Is there any questions tonight? There is. Awesome. Uh, Les Barkley, two twenty two Concordia Place. I have a, a question and request to make of council and staff. 
So like uh, Councillor Fuller, I do all my reading and annotating on my iPad, so I save, save trees, save the environment. Um, and uh, so I, I appreciated uh, being able to uh, read and annotate uh, Ms. Samra's presentation report on uh, the Watson report. However, when it came to the two subsequent reports, I saw all the text. I couldn't follow that. And I was looking for it on here. All I had was the 2013 update. Uh, what I was looking at was not, was not with that. I don't know why, why that was. Uh, I would ask that uh, even if, if they are late, uh, I imagine that was what, what happened. It shouldn't uh, be that difficult to add to the uh, city's website. Uh, uh, if you can't do it print-wise, print at least digital, so that those who wish to read and follow along can, can do so. Yes, absolutely. We add the supplemental items from a meeting just like this when they've been added at the meeting. We add them to our website as a supplemental item, so they'll be posted on the website. Sure, uh, I, I see that, but it's difficult for us to follow along. There was a lot that was covered in those two, uh, two updates, and uh, it would be easier for the public to, uh, to, to, to engage with these meetings if, if that was made available at this time. We do have some paper copies here, but yes, I understand what you're saying, and we do add them afterwards. So thank you. And let me add, add one, more, one more request. Um, your, the notice of, of tonight's meeting, if one reads it, it uh, indicates that the meeting begins at 5 o'clock, and uh, further down in that notice, it uh, notes that uh, council may, if council decides to leave... Uh, I should look at that, uh, to, to leave the in-camera meeting and consider items for the public, they will do so, but it doesn't indicate what time that, uh, that this meeting, in fact, occurs. If you read the agenda, that you'll see that it, it happens at 7 o'clock, but without reading that, it's not clear for the public, so some people may come at 5 o'clock or, or think that this open meeting, which really, uh, the 5 o'clock meeting, which is not really open, it's, it's closed, uh, is all that there is. Um, um, Councillor Bestwick. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parkley, thanks. I, I think it's important, as well as he does, that the items that are on our agenda, um, supplemental or otherwise, uh, form part of what the citizens can access for the meeting that evening. Uh, and in most cases, I'm sure that uh, that's something that is something that could be accomplished. Uh, there was a time when we didn't have the information that's displayed behind us or on the TV in front of us for the viewing audience, and uh, we have that available now. So I think Mr. Barkley makes an, an excellent point that that should be. Uh, number two, um, the what time the meeting was going to start or otherwise, I just made the assumption that this was another one of our 7 o'clock Monday night meetings. I shouldn't make those assumptions on behalf of everybody else, but uh, I, I would probably just gloss over or read over that and go, I, I know I'm coming to the in-camera meeting at 5, and, and then we're going live at 7. And so um, I apologize if that was something that was misunderstood as it relates to how it was displayed. I uh, don't know what else to say about that. Thank you. Ms. Samra. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, yeah, we do, with the, with the late items, we want to get things out in the original agenda package. And some of the things we do to accommodate the public is we had the digitals ready to go, so people at home did have that benefit, and paper copies here. Um, the decision to go with the two additional reports was... Uh, they had just become available literally today, late in the afternoon, and we thought it best to give council an update to 2015 rather than 2014 before they went away. And so we made that decision that it was, it was important enough that we were hoping that the paper copies would meet most people's needs and that the digital copies would meet the needs at home. But I do appreciate those comments coming forward. As for this particular meeting, it is not a regularly scheduled council meeting. But given the volume of work that council is doing now and the information that staff wanted to get in front of council as it sets strategic priorities and strategic capital projects and starts to tackle the core services 
review and deal with the outstanding committees issue, we thought it was important that a meeting be held on this date and council um, did agree that they wanted to have the meeting this this today and that's the anomaly in how it was scheduled as opposed to the regular schedule one where everyone knows we do the five and then we come back at the seven. So thank you for alerting us to that and we will take steps to address that in the future. Uh, uh, one more question. Um, questions, I see that questions at, media, at uh, council meetings can only be questions pertaining to agenda items. So if the, uh, the, the uh, strategic plan and the, the four pillars are not on the next meeting of council, but a member of the public wishes to ask a question, having had the opportunity after tonight's meeting to read and digest the report, how would they do so if it is uh, an agenda item from the previous meeting? Um, Council, I'm going to, before I go to Councillor Fowler, Councillor Bassett. I'd be happy to, to provide what I understand the answer to be, and that is <laughs> the next meeting, this will form part of the minutes, and the minutes will form part of the agenda, and therefore you will be able to ask a question of the agenda items only because we will have adopted the minutes of tonight's meeting at the next, whenever we whenever we do that. So for me, it's on the next agenda, even if it's because it forms part of the minutes of tonight's meeting. Okay, so it's important that's to go my, through those minutes. That's my opinion. Now, I stand to be corrected here pretty quick. I'm sure I will be. But okay. um, that, if I was coming to the podium, that's how I'd say it's on the agenda, even if it's not. Well, it's in the minutes. So, um, Ms. Hammer, can I go to Councillor Fuller? Or you got a comment? We've got a couple of answers for that. Um, the content of the additional add-ons, the two reports by Victor and Dale, will form part of the annual report and will be on the agenda next week. So all of that content you get a, a second set of questions for. Uh, this stuff was just a five-year summary of what was done uh, while the strategic plan was in place. So if you have questions on that, I invite you to send them to Legislative Services and we'll direct them through staff if you have specific questions on uh, particular projects that staff worked on in previous years. What, 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 what time is the next meeting? Sheila? The next meeting is a regular scheduled council meeting and it will be at 7 p.m. in the Shaw Auditorium. And just a, another note for that, it, it is on the top of the agenda, the time for tonight's meeting. It says it goes um, at five in camera. Well, on the agenda, but not on the notice. That, that was my point. Oh, okay. And, and the notice goes first. If you're looking, you see the notice. See on the very top of the... That for the agenda, yes. But if you go to the notice, you won't see seven o'clock. I don't believe. I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity at this moment now to hand it to Councillor Fuller, who's been waiting diligently. Yeah, I, I totally get what you mean about the notice and the agenda. Um, now, usually when the notice comes out, it's followed by the agenda very shortly, and then you would click on the agenda and you'd find that information. And in case you're uncomfortable with uh, Councillor Bestwick's uh, option of asking questions to the minutes at the next meeting, you can always apply to the Committee of the Whole and appear as a delegation once you've read it thoroughly. And then you can just lay on the questions as many as you want and just get right into the dirty details. Ten minutes. Is that an items, invitation? Items not <laughs> on the agenda. All right. So, Is that an invitation? It's up to you. It's an invitation okay. to the whole community to do it because we really appreciate the feedback we get. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gurry? Oh. And I just wanted to add one more thing. There was two reports on the agenda tonight related to the presentations, um, the Watson report update and the strategic planning update. So it actually was an agenda item. <laughs> um, the additional information was just supplemental to the actual report on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. Not seeing any other. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I was still on the mend.
Uh, Robert Fuller, 3350 Hammond Bay Road. Uh, I've got two questions here. The first one can fit in with the Watson Report and the strategic plan. And I was just wondering, like, you see the Watson Report and you see the community charter, and it's basically dealing with the governors, there just doesn't seem to be any reports that I see other than a few communities that are put out for the governed. And I was just wondering if quite possibly when you're doing the strategic plan under something like taking responsibility that council might consider a citizen's group on governance and accessibility to City Hall. Maple Ridge did this, and they've got a great document out. That is my first question. And my second one is on the strategic plan. Uh, I'm hearing councils moving forward with this. Is there going to be any citizen participation in this, in the implementation and the forming? Um, Ms. Samron, the first question in regards to Mr. Mr. Fuller, does the staff have a more concrete answer? Council can consider that recommendation. Absolutely. The Watson Report is just one that's on the books with lots of different recommendations as to governance. And if it wanted to explore an option that another municipality does, they certainly could. Before I go to the next, uh, Councillor Hong, uh, Mr. Fuller, did you say, I didn't hear the community, was it Maple Ridge you stated had a good document? Maple Ridge is a really good one. I, I, I can send it to all of Council tomorrow or the next day. Speaking for myself, I'd, I'd appreciate it. It'd be great if you could do that. Um, Councillor Hong. Thank you. And on to your second question. We're not really redoing the strategic plan. So I think when we do do a new strategic plan, the community will be involved. I think it's a, it's a full process of doing it. But what we're doing right now, I think, is capital projects. So I'm confused on what your question, how you want us to engage. Well, I just heard the council is moving forward. Uh, they're going on a workshop or a retreat dealing with the strategic plan. No, our priorities, our, our, our projects. We're not doing a new strategic plan. When we do, then we will engage. So this will be an update on it. Yeah, we're keep. Yes, so we're going to keep this strategic plan. We're not changing it. Yeah. Good for now, Councillor Hong. Councillor Fuller. Just, just so the public knows, when we say retreat, we're not flying out. We're not going over to Gabriola. We're going to be stuck in a room in an office building in town. That's our retreat. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Fuller. My name is Tim McGrath, 431 3rd. Um, I was sitting here and, and enjoying the conversation, uh, enjoying uh, this evening's meeting. Um, I do have a question uh, about Mr. N that, that Mr. Nima presented was on the uh, pillars, and he was making a comment, and, and I don't want to get it wrong, um, but I understood you said that, that we're giving money to the NEDC and to the VICC, and we're hoping that we're going to get a return on the downtown. Um, I'm wondering if you can tell us how it's going to be measured. When we invest all this money, how are, how are we going to gauge the success or non-success thereof? Through, through the chair, um, I don't recall the exact words I, I, I made, uh, but maybe Hope was one of them. Uh, the, so if we take, for instance, the VICC, the whole model on VICC is that there would be an economic uh, outspin from delegates' meetings that get booked at VICC, and that would uh, spill over to businesses and employment in town. That's, that's the model. 
Uh, and so you, if you look at the, the core service review uh, that just came out, and it explained on what that model looks like, where if you looked at every or most uh, convention centers, a uh, few of them do make money, uh, but most of them are used as an economic driver. Um, so from a public perspective, uh, what you see in the books is a subsidy. Uh, but then if you look at the reports that VICC uh, produces, you then see the economic impact that comes from uh, those meetings that happen. Uh, the same with the NEDC, uh, the subsidy or funding that's provided is supposed to spare economic development of some sort, whether it's new businesses coming into town, uh, improving the, the profile of the community uh, for, for, for other purposes. And uh, to the extent that we provide a, a grant or support to the, uh, to, to the Downtown Business Association, that's also the same model. What we didn't have, if you recall, uh, comments from Ms. Samra is as much as we had these strategies outlined in the strategic plan, there were no performance measures where you could say for the amount of money that's provided, we expect to get five businesses. So I can't sit here and say to you we, we hit the target of five businesses because that wasn't put down. Well, the reason why I'm asking the question is because I'm sure that when the VICC comes to council and tells you how good they've been after getting all this money, I'm sure that the citizens may not necessarily agree. So what I'm asking is how does the city measure it? Are they just taking the word of the VICCs on the number of delegate days and how much money and how much economic impact that delivers? Or does the city have an independent set of numbers that they're going to use? To the best of my knowledge, we don't even get audited statements. We get whatever they prepare. I'll speak to the second one because it's the second question because it's an easier one. So if you look at VICC, VICC is really an extension of the city operations. It's actually audited by our own auditors. So that's how we audit VICC. Uh, we only have a management contract with a management company that's running VICC on behalf of the city. Uh, and we consolidate their operation and they go through the same audit process that the city goes through. Um, I'll go back to my comment that at this point, as rightly I think pointed out by the core service review, we need to button up on the performance side uh, where you actually say we, we, we are providing this funding and this is the output we're looking for. Then we can easily have a conversation whether that output has been met or not. Okay. So, so that is in progress that you will be coming back and saying this is what we expect in response to our money? The, the short answer is yes, because that's a recommendation that came out of the core service review and we'll be following up on that. Okay, I just want to ensure that. Thank you. And now, the VICC is in fact part of the city, but I know that the NEDC and the DNBIA and the port operate a little differently. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Uh, have those same safeguards? So to, to the extent that the organization is governed somewhat by the city, and so NEDC obviously is a subsidiary of the city, so this part of the recommendation was that the city ties some performance measure of sorts to its funding. So we should be able to see that coming down uh, once the recommendations are being implemented. Other organizations that we, we provide funding to or grants to, we, we don't have that governance oversight. Uh, so that, that's a different... Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. You. You're welcome. Any other folks wishing for question period? Moving, Jerry. Move second. Move by best. Councilor Bassett. Councilor Hong. Yep. Move, Jerry. Holy smokes. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.